Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're going to talk about ready positions with the handgun. One good thing about teaching self-defense focused classes is I get to observe students in more of a as realistic as we can make it setting. Again, it's not going to be completely realistic because there's a range and there are safety concerns that we have to obey because firearms discharge inherently dangerous projectiles. But I do get to observe how students interact with it with problems. Um, there's drills which are procedural and then there's scenarios which the student doesn't have a lot of information going into or no information going into other than there could potentially be threats. One of the, the things that I observe when I see a student in a drill is their muzzle orientation, their muzzle safety is really, really good. When they get into a scenario, they still are to varying degrees, but more across the board, very, very safe because safety has already been ingrained into them. Um, they will actually go to somewhat unrealistic uh, attempts to maintain what they understand is a safe muzzle direction. So I'll have a scenario set up to where the student has to move to the rear. And instead of pointing their muzzle in the safest direction possible, they'll attempt to keep the muzzle pointed at the berm while they move rearward, which actually isn't a very effective way to move if you think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna create some difficulties my, for myself when I'm moving. And that's one thing that I try to get students out of. We always wanna point our muzzle in the safest direction possible. I will use the word, word always for that, but we have to apply some common sense to that. We, we wanna make sure we don't have a myopic approach to what we're talking about. We need to understand that the safest direction possible may not be the safest direction probable. Of course, you may be wondering where I'm going with this, and we're gonna to get to ready positions and kind of the, the disambiguation of what is and what isn't a ready position, but safest direction probable, safest direction possible. Uh, when it comes to interacting with threats, uh, you've got knowns, they get guns pointed at them. They're a known threat. You've got unknowns, they get guns pointed at them too because you haven't determined yet if they are in fact a threat. If it's immediately apparent that they're not a threat, you wouldn't point a gun at them, which means they're not an unknown. They're immediately in the third category, which is innocence. Uh, those are my three categories. Knowns, unknowns, innocence. You can apply whatever names you want to them as long as it's really, really clear what we're talking about. Knowns, active threats, threats that have somehow endangered our life or threatened to endanger our life or the life of someone we've chosen to protect and we're lawfully able to exercise lethal force against them. An unknown, you're in an environment where a threat is highly probable uh, and you encounter this person and until you've kind of evaluated them, until you've processed them, until you've visually evaluated them, if you will, you're going to point a firearm at them. That's just, that's just how things work. Once you've determined that they are a threat, they fall into that known category. If you determine that they are in fact an innocent party, you stop pointing a gun at them immediately. Now, when you stop pointing a gun at them or when you're trying to keep from muzzling innocence, uh, muzzle direction should not exist in this magic box. The magic box comes from square ranges. We don't want to point our guns up for some reason. We don't want to point our guns left, probably because in older range designs, there's no berms to the left or to the right. And we don't want to point our guns down necessarily, unless it's okay, because the terrain that you're on may be concrete, which uh, is more prone to ricochets. Now, when you get into more dirt berms and, and some of the other common mentalities out there, you see guys that do want you to point your gun down or down range, and those are the only two directions that you're allowed to point it in. And plainly, that's bullshit. So ready positions, what exactly are we talking about with ready positions with a handgun? My definition is a ready position is any position in which the handgun can be immediately fired or fired with one movement. If the position that the handgun is in requires more than one movement to put the gun into play, I wouldn't really consider that a ready position. Reason being, why would you use a position that required you to take multiple steps when a position where it took one or no steps to fire the firearm if you had to uh, would be beneficial and completely usable? So when we're talking about ready positions, like I said, ready position, no movement or one movement. And then of course, anything else is to me is gonna fall into the category of a movement or an administrative position. If you've drawn your firearm or if you've picked your firearm up off your nightstand, depending on the context of the situation, you have a reasonable expectation of using it. So you should probably place it in the safest ready position that's available to you, unless the context of the situation does not allow you to do that. Uh, and those things can be small and infinitesimal. Remember we talked about that magic box. My gun doesn't exist inside this magic square to where I can't move it this far right, this far left, this far up, this far down. Um, downrange is not a, it's not a real thing outside of a range environment. So if I have my handgun in my hand, 
what are my ready positions? My definitions going through it is a high ready is a full extension off the sights, so I have full view. I'm not hard focused on that front sight. And more of a low ready or a compressed position is I'm going to pull the firearm back into my chest just like this. If I had to shoot from this position, I could. If I had to shoot from this position, it's one movement. Whereas here, if I've got really good eye-hand coordination and the threat's close enough, I can actually shoot from this compressed position before I press out and get my sights. Maybe I'm so close to my threat that I can't press all the way out and without putting my gun within his reach. Those are two really distinct ready positions. One thing I see students do sometimes, and I see other students do it sometimes, and I see shooters at ranges do, is they have this third option where they bring the gun down here and then bring it up here. Bring it down here, bring it up here. I don't like this position at all, unless down is the safest way to point the gun, but this is not a ready position. Yes, it does take one motion to get the gun up here, but you have to ask yourself, what are you gaining by doing this over this or this? Now, if I'm static, meaning I'm, I'm not moving, then I can go to that full extension position and I can bring the muzzle down safely. Guns pointed in the safest direction possible if that's available to me. Uh, but as soon as I start to move, this position becomes somewhat problematic. If I go into a crouching position or if I have to ma maneuver cover, now I've got to make sure I meter that arc so I can safely maneuver the gun. Now, as a thinking animal, as a thinking creature, you can be like, okay, I need to pull the gun in a little bit, then bring it up and then press it back out. Um, so, if you do choose to use this full arm extension muzzle down position, you just have to do it knowing that if you move, the faster you move, the more likely you are to be muzzling your own legs as you run. Uh, and another thing is it's just not as ergonomic as some of the other positions that are available to you. Another thing to consider uh, when it comes to a ready position is, do you have a ready position that only requires the use of one hand? Can I put the firearm in a safe place where I can maneuver it with one hand because my other hand is needed for something? One thing I do see, especially in my force on force classes, is when people have to navigate doorways, they tend to muzzle the shit out of themselves. Now what I'm talking about specifically is, let's use finger guns uh, for the sake of safety. Uh, depending on which way the door opens, most of your interior doors inside your home are going to open into the rooms because hallway width and so on and so forth. There are some homes different like that. Most of your exterior doors into the home are going to open in, unless you're in Florida, hurricanes, so on and so forth, those doors tend to open out. If I'm right-handed, and I'm grasping this doorknob, there's a very real possibility that my gun could be pointed right there at my hand because my hands kind of want to be doing the same thing at the same time. Parasympathetic response, whatever you want to call it. Here I am, grasping door to go in or just to throw the door open, and now I've muzzled my hand. Is it a big deal? No, but yes, because we don't want to muzzle ourselves. We don't want to muzzle anything we don't intend to shoot or destroy, right? So let's say for the sake of argument, um, the stars have aligned to create this very calamitous situation. And as I'm grasping this doorknob and muzzling myself, someone from the inside flings the door open. I have a convulsive star response, firearm discharges, shoot myself in the hand. Could that happen? It has happened. And of course, it's on the rare side of things. Some of you may have never even heard of such a thing occurring, but that has occurred, which means it can occur again. And of course, we get back to the old adage, just because something hasn't happened doesn't mean it can't happen. So getting back to that concept, that, that close compression, why would I close compress the gun versus out and down or, or some variation of that? Well, I'm gonna point the gun in the safest direction possible. If a high compression, if a horizontal muzzle direction is possible, then why not use it? Because I can immediately fire, I have no steps. Now again, I probably don't wanna complete an engagement from here or if the threat's further away, I wanna punch out and get my sights, but I can immediately shoot from this position if I have to. Another reason is I'm less likely to wander my muzzle into my hand if I've hard grained and hard practiced the idea of that horizontal, that horizontal ready position. Now, this isn't the same as a high pectoral index, so much as this is just a one hand close compression because my support hand is gonna have to do things. And I need to be able to take my support hand off the gun knowledgeably, safely, and in a practiced motion in order to interact with the environment around me. If I've got to open doors, pull people out of the way, push people down, work a flashlight, so on and so forth, I want to be able to do that. And I also want to avoid the urge, if I can, to telegraph my movements, especially moving indoors or working under low light. Navigation of the muzzle by degrees. Pointing the muzzle in the safest direction possible. So let's say these are three innocents. All three of these are innocent people, and somehow in a snapshot in time or for you know two or three seconds or for five or ten minutes, I have to interact with my firearm out in this environment where I've got three different no-shoots, three different innocent people at three different heights. Is muzzle down going to be a safe direction? Is horizontal going to be a safe direction? 
Can I not, if I have to, put the gun into a movement or a safety position, which is such as a muzzle up, temple index, if you will, but I'm gonna point the gun straight up because in this situation, known is going to take precedence over unknown. I know that down is not a safe direction or of the directions on the compass available to me, the 360 degree compass, up is going to be the safest known direction. Now, again, I have to considerations. What is the, is there a second floor over me? Is it open sky? What is the environment that I'm in? I have to be a thinking animal about that. If for some reason I can't point the gun up because you know maybe I'm in the, the bottom floor of a six story building, that's a concern of mine. Can I not point the gun in a safer direction? Is this going to be the safest direction? There's no real way I can work this puzzle of people and point the gun in a safe direction by adhering to some of the more static rules regarding muzzle direction. I have to be able to work the gun in a safe method, safe environment where I'm basically moving by safety of degrees. Whatever I have to do in order to point the gun in the safest direction possible is exactly what I'm going to do. So this gets back to that, that square, right? The gun doesn't exist in that magic box. I need to be able to point the gun in the safest direction possible. And that may be up, it may be down, it may be down and then immediately turn to horizontal or up because I have to navigate the world as the world is occurring. I can't stop and say, okay, which way is the safest down range direction to point my gun? That's not how real life works. So muzzle up is not a ready position because uh, it's gonna take me multiple steps to get the gun into action. Muzzle down might not be a ready position depending on if I have two hands on the gun. One position that comes up a lot is Sewell. Sewell has gained and then lost and then gained and then lost popularity based on context. Basically Sewell is bringing the gun into my chest, using my support hand to angle the muzzle slightly so I don't muzzle myself when I'm moving. But even in this position, if I were to run, I'm gonna muzzle my legs. Uh, if you go into a crouching position in Sewell, you're gonna muzzle your thighs. If you're interacting in an environment where there are people on the ground, such as cuffed suspects, or maybe it was an active shooter situation, or maybe it's nap time at preschool, who knows? You're going to muzzle those people in this position. Um, if you dig around on Live Leak, there's some videos of officers uh, maintaining perimeters during shootings where they're muzzling themselves because they're crouched behind a car in the Sewell position. You have to wonder why that doesn't occur to the person. And I think why it doesn't occur is because the fact that that position is supposed to be safe has been so ingrained in them that they don't bother to do a diagnostic check in real time and say, hey, is this the safest position for me to be in right now with my muzzle? If they're in a crouching position, the answer is probably going to be no. If they're standing over cuffed suspects, the answer is probably going to be no. If they're standing over kids, small children who are standing on their own or laying on the floor, maybe it's a full grown adult who's just had in the moment of the situation become injured or is just happens to be hiding on the ground or laying on the ground. This is not going to be a safe muzzle direction interacting in those environments. Now a law enforcement officer is more likely to be in situations like that than the average citizen. But that, mean, that, that doesn't mean that there's an excuse for the average citizen not to think about this in their own personal practice. We want to use our common sense. And common sense basically means let's get away from the idea of these dogmatic muzzle positions based on this school of teaching or this school of teaching. Let's approach it from more of a organic uh, point of view, meaning I'm just going to point my gun safe direction possible. Um, it doesn't have to have a name. It just has to be a direction on the 360 degree compass. I want to be able to move my muzzle fluidly through an environment and point it in the safest direction that I, that I know is available to me. Known safe direction is going to take, place, uh, take precedence over unknown. If you fire a round off in the air negligently, is it going to come back down? Gravity says yes, uh, but if you fire a round negligently downwards into a concrete surface, is it going to come back a lot faster? Yeah. Uh, could you potentially injure a small child or a crouching adult or someone who's medically injured or whatnot because they're laying below you and you're standing over them? Absolutely. So in those situations, you have to kind of do that self-diagnostic and decide, okay, is this the safest direction to be pointing my gun? Uh, the safest direction to point your gun at all times is at a known threat, but if there is no known threat or if the threat has gone to cover or something like that, then you have to work that muzzle accordingly. If, you're, if you have the luxury of open spaces, then you don't have to worry so much about compressing the gun or, or things of that nature, but you might want to stay off your sights based on the situation and the context and the lighting available and so on and so forth because you're going to lose some data if you're sucked into your front sight post for no reason. So this isn't always the right answer. This isn't always the right answer. We also want to have that position available too that allows us to use our support side hand to interact with the world around us and then bring the gun back to play uh, as we are able. So when you're thinking about muzzle directions, obviously on the ranges that you practice on, you have to follow their guidelines. Totally understood. 
But in your own personal practice, your dry fire practice, think about those muzzle directions as you're moving through your house. If you have small children, is, is muzzle down the safest position for you to move in as you're navigating through your home? You know you have small children, but you have a muzzle down ready position. You know that those small children have little legs and they can run around the house just like you can. Do you want to run into a situation where you come around the corner and investigating the bump in the night, moving towards your kid's room, your kid's coming to you, and then suddenly your six-year-old is staring up at the muzzle of your gun because your ready position is default down because you've never really done that self-diagnostic. Be like, should this be where I point my gun? Something to think about. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.